Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I have some Orchid updates to share with you guys. I have some good things, some bad things. Gonna tell you how this summer affected my orchids because it was a heck of a summer. I didn't like it, my orchids didn't like it either. So without further ado, let's get to it. But before we do that, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it. And hey, why not subscribe? I post three times. Actually, I post every single day. I post something most days, whether it's a short or a full length video and it's completely free. So why not subscribe? Do it, do it now. Right, let's get to work. Let me show you something disappointing. This guy, this is the Papiopetalum Rothschildianum. I bought him when he was a tiny little baby. I grew him, he is all grown up now. He also bloomed. I hope you can see the spent flowers. And I actually mentioned in one video that this has to be my most expensive orchid. It didn't cost much when I purchased it because it was tiny, but if you were to purchase this orchid at this size, it would be quite costly. Maybe a hundred, 150 dollars, euros, something like that, depending on the source. So it bloomed, the blooms faded, and I didn't make a fuss about it. Why, you might ask? Well, because the blooms were, um, should I say, disappointing. They weren't what I expected a Rothschildianum to look like. I took some photos, I'm gonna show you. So I was expecting this orchid to have straight petals, like I see in pictures, but no, it actually had rounded petals and it didn't really look like a Rothschildianum necessarily should. Now, is it a variety? Is it a hybrid? Is it mislabeled? Could be, could very well be, although, it looks legit, like the plant looks legit, the flowers were weird. Could it be that it's the first bloom and it's just not showing its full potential? That could be it as well, but I was a bit disappointed, I won't lie. So that's why I just didn't show him to you. I just took some pictures. I hope I still have the pictures. <laughs> anyway, it didn't really look like a pure Rostildianum, or if it is, it is a variety of it. It's not, let's say, the most common one or the one that I expected. Who knows? Now, if any of you are more experienced with Rothschildianums, do let me know in a comment below what do you think I have here? Do you think it's a pure Rothschildianum or a hybrid and it's just mislabeled? I don't know. I have to say I wasn't a big, big fan of the flowers. I was expecting to be wowed. I was not. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't want to say dislike him, but I wasn't impressed by the blooms, to be fully honest. If I were, and I'm kind of close to that position, to save space and to cut away some more kids in my collection because I really just want to keep the stuff I really, really love, I would give this guy away. That's how much I wasn't impressed with the blooms. The problem is these new growths here, yeah, they're gonna take two or three years to bloom. That's how slow this guy grows. So should I keep him for another two to three years and see if I will be disappointed again? I don't know, I fear like this guy will go to a new home Maybe, because he's big, he's very big. And I just don't love him enough. And that's not fair for the orchid, right? These things can happen sometimes. Okay, just realized I might've been a little underexposed previously. If the previous image was not really all that good, I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you can see this orchid better. Next up, we have the Aceocladis spatulifera. Now this one is a recently potted one. If you remember, I told you that this self-watering pot had a little problem with its wick. The polypropylene uh, wicks that I used to use at some point got clogged up. I think they're a little different than the ones, let's say Lechuza comes with, because with those I don't have issues, but with that one, it did get clogged up. So in the end, what I had was a dehydrating orchid up top and water left in the reservoir because the wick was not pulling the water. So in a previous video, I showed you that I replaced that wick with this microfiber cloth wick, which I repurposed from a different pot. They wash so, so easily. They're great. They're gonna last you a lot of time. And I'm happy to tell you that indeed now it works as it should. I can let this pot dry out and no water will be left in the reservoir. It wicks up everything. As long as there is some water in the reservoir, the orchid is hydrated. And as you can see, I have here my Aceocladis, which is a terrestrial orchid doing great. This one does not like to dry out pretty much at all. And the pseudobulbs become so, so shriveled <laughs> if it gets dry. So this setup is really so good for it. At this point, I think I can remove some of these sheaths. Yeah, look at that. This little bulb is so pretty. 
If you want to know more about this orchid, I'll link it down below to my care tutorial on it. It's a really easy orchid to grow. You can find it at orchid nurseries, of course, not flower shops, which is the motto of the orchid grower. You're not gonna find it in flower shops, honey. <laughs> Luckily, there are orchid nurseries all around the world, and especially if you live in the USA, you're super fortunate to have a whole bunch of them. All you need to do is Google for one. Long story short, I fixed the self-watering pot. I fixed the issue. So if you are using those polypropylene wicks and you discover your self-watering pot doesn't really behave as it should, it's the wick. Hopefully it's just the product that I use and the product you're using, if you're using, is better and it doesn't get clogged up, mine did. So I'll be sticking to the microfiber wicks from now on because they just work properly. They're not gonna get clogged. I can wash them super easily and they're just gonna last me a lifetime. Next up, here we have the Dendrobium Athelum Keikis. Again, I will link the video with the circuit down below in the description. This is the variegated variety, which has just started to show variegation. I'm not entirely sure if the older leaves just lose variegation as they grow or the variegation just appeared because I placed it under the grow lights and that intense light caused more variegation. It's a good thing to try and observe. And I'll tell you a little later when I get to know this guy better. This is a newer orchid actually. And what happened was the mother plant lost all of its roots and furthermore, instead of creating new growth from the base, it just grew keikis. So in that video, I showed you how I potted the keikis and the mother stem just around at soil level. This is not soil, but let's say potting mix level. Cut away the dry part of the mother stem and now I can already see little roots all around the pot. The orchid has started to really root in and grow much, much faster. The next step will be to separate, obviously, all of these keikis. I will pot them in the same pot, but this will happen next year. I want them to have proper, proper roots before I go ahead and separate them from the mother plant. I want the mother stem to give all of its energy. So probably next year or next season, rather, I will separate them. But what's funny is that the mother cane was kind of shriveled, if you remember in that video, whale. Now, because the keikis have roots, they're not only feeding themselves, they're also feeding <laughs> or hydrating the mother cane as well. And that can happen. It's not only the new growth and the new roots feeding the entire orchid, the backside of the orchid. It can also work like this. The keiki is actually feeding the stem. Everything communicates. So that's kind of fun. But anyway, what we wanted to do, we achieved. The keikis are saved. The plant is saved. And dare I say, it looks so pretty, so cute. I love this variegation. I hope it's gonna intensify more and more and I hope it's not gonna fade as the leaf matures. But again, I'll let you know once I get more acquainted with this orchid. It's a beautiful orchid. I really, really like it. I actually like variegated plants, generally speaking. But variegated orchids, oh, music to my ears. Delight for my eyes. <laughs> I love them. Okay, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna give you an update on a house... It's not even a house plant, on a different plant as well. I wanna show you my mini rose bush that I showed you a few weeks ago on that plant haul. I did not repot him just yet, I will. I will take you along, I'll film the video. I just wanted to show you that uh, it's growing. It's not dead. Well, part of it is. There were three individual plants in this pot and I can see one of them is not alive anymore, but the other two seem to be doing well and they have a lot of new growth. So I actually already purchased rose soil. Hopefully it's a good branded. Oh, I have a bud. I'll give you a close up. I do believe this is a bud. I have a bud, you guys. Excuse the birdies. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just saw the bud. I am so excited. Oh my gosh. Did I tell you I love roses? There's something about them that is just so classy. I'll tell you a little bit of a story. When I was growing up, my grandma used to have, I think it was a damask rose. I'm, I'm not entirely sure of the variety. It was fantastic. It was quite a big bush. And my grandmother used to make syrup and also gem or marmalade. Not entirely sure how to translate it in English. It has a specific word in Romanian. It's called dulceața. Um, it's not gem, it's not marmalade, I think. It's, it's a different thing. So she used to make food out of the petals. I grew up with that, actually, instead of candy and stuff, which we didn't really have much of when I was growing up. 
I used to have that rose. My grandmother we used to always make me sandwiches with margarine and marmalade of that rose and also juices. And I did see that type of rose at the garden center. I cannot grow it in this space because it's big. It's quite big. I smelt it and immediately childhood. I guess that's where my love for roses stems. I love them. I wish I had the possibility to grow them. I hope one day I will. Uh, but definitely in my garden, you will always see at least a bush of that very fragrant rose. I don't know the variety. Maybe it is a Bulgarian rose? Hmm, I don't know. I think there are a few varieties that are used for edible stuff. Uh, this is not it. This is definitely not it. But I just love it nonetheless. And I'm so happy to see that bud. I'm so happy, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a plant that is not an orchid, which I can rebloom. And it's a mini rose. Yay! All right, the cat lass. I'll start with Princess Jackie because I know somebody asked me about her. She is doing great. We have a little problem. I don't know where my mind was when I repotted it. This year in February, actually. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I was thinking. Do you see how this new growth is already at the edge of the pot? Why did I center this orchid? What was in my mind? I think it's okay for me to repot it now because the roots are not super, super established just yet. This is the type of orchid that really doesn't like its roots damaged way too much. And whenever the orchid is very, very established and you wanna remove all of that broken down medium, I always damage a few roots and this orchid always takes a little bit of time to get over it. So I'm trying to bother it as less as possible. And then I go ahead and repot it like this. It's like I don't have eight freaking years of experience. <laughs> anyway, I fail sometimes as well. But she's okay, she's here as you can see. I did remove the older growths. I'm trying to keep my collection a little bit more compact because I need the room. And I just don't like a whole lot of bushiness for two flowers. Just something I discovered. So she is currently residing inside because she has been sprayed and she looks okay. She doesn't have any more bugs, but there are some cattleyas which do still have bugs and which are not here since they can actually tolerate the heat. Well, this year they hated, absolutely hated the outside world. Mind you, it is time to repot them as well. They have been in that medium for two and a half years at this point, or at least more than two years. And the medium is starting to break down a lot and I don't think they like it. So what I'm working on now, and it's quite a job, is to repot them as I bring them in. I repot them, remove the old growth, spray them for pests because they do have the thrip problem. Like all of my orchids, them not so much, but still they do. The thrips actually attack the sheets and the, the flower sheets. All of these structures, which are not very, very thick. And also new growth. When the new growth starts, the new leaves, Oh, they like that. So now what I do is get my, where is it? Get my leaf shine, which you can see, this is a different brand. Uh, they're all the same here in this area. They have paraffin oil. What am I doing? <laughs> they look like a chicken trying to sit on the eggs. So what I do is just, that's all I do. Spray a little, little bit on the new growth, just to be sure no thrips will attack it because this is where it all starts. And when the new growth starts to grow, all of those thrips just burrow themselves within the foliage of the new growth. It's just so hard to reach them. So whenever I see a new growth, I spray it preventively now. Cause oh boy, oh boy, they like the new growth. The Princess Jackie is okay. My Catleas, they're okay, but that's what I'm doing. And it takes a heck of a lot of time to repot each and every single one of them, spray each one individually, and then bring them into the grow room. But overall, yeah, they really didn't like this here. It was a little too hot for them as well. They grew just not as vigorous as the previous years. And now the seriously bad news. I did a boo-boo. I thought, well, it's so hot outside. What a great timing to shower my slipper orchids, my paphiopetalums, also my phalaenopsis. The fowls are okay. The paths are not. This is not the only one. Look at this one. This one had a bud. So many of them have crown rot. It's not even funny. 
and I thought I took all of the precautions and I thought I did this in the warmest time possible for that water to evaporate and to not cause damage and rot and it still did it. This is the reason why I sometimes lose my stuff. The expression is a little different, but I don't talk like that on this channel. I lose it sometimes when I read the comment. Well, what do these orchids do in nature, huh? Well, let us not compare nature with our growing spaces. This is the perfect example of our limitations, of our condition, let's say. Nature is home sweet home. Our living room is a very, very alien territory. What we're trying to do is play by the rules that we can follow in our territory. We cannot play by the same rules as nature does. We don't have nearly the same amount of ventilation, the same amount of fresh air, the same water. I showered these with tap water. I don't have rain water. It doesn't rain here for half of the year. And also I don't want to waste all of my osmosis water. I would have to use a hundred liters maybe to shower everybody properly, like properly, properly. There's also a very different bacterial climate. We have very different pathogens here. Some of these pathogens that these orchids may not encounter in their natural habitat, they don't even have defenses for. I don't know what type of fungus slash bacteria caused this rot. Rot is not one single ailment. It is a result usually of a pathogen, of a different ailment. So the fact that I got stem rot and crown rot, it's not one single thing here. Something in my environment simply decimated all, not all, <laughs> many of my paths. The fowls are fine. They only attacked these guys. Why? Search me, I don't know. I really don't. I wish I knew, I wish I knew and I could determine and I could see under the microscope what this pathogen is that only affected the slipper orchids but I can't, I cannot give you this answer. But this can happen even in cultivation. Um, this is the first year that it happens though. I did shower my paths in the past as well and I didn't have issues this time either. Stuff aligned just right for this water to linger a little bit too much in the foliage and cause this. Or I had something in the air. Maybe there's something in my region which given the right conditions, the right moisture can do this this year because each year is just a little bit different depends what the outbreak is outside because many many stuff happen outside as well so that can happen and i have to say i'm not happy about it uh, i learned my lesson again i will never shower paps what i will do is get myself a little brush i'm just gonna dust them really really nice i'm gonna make sure to keep them pest free with this thing they didn't have many pests the, the paps were some of the only orchids that didn't have pests that was the only good thing I was clinging on to, but now, and I keep looking at them. Now they're kind of decimated, they don't look good. So yeah, it's the last time I ever freaking shower these orchids. Now, just because this happened to me doesn't mean it will happen to you as well. Again, you'll find probably a comment that says, well, I shower my orchids all the time and nothing bad happens. I'm just very sad about this. I think you can tell. I just hope I managed to convince somebody to just be a little bit more careful with this video. At least that, that's my consolation prize. Other than that, I'm gonna have to repurchase these guys because I really, really like them. I like my paths. Oh well, what to do? <laughs> and to end this video on a more positive note, the fowls. The mini fowls are actually okay. They're a lot more robust than the paths, at least here in my climate, but they're also thrip favorites, unlike paths. I discovered. So I want to show you how thrip damage looks like. Do you see this leaf has two indentations? Those are not a mutation or some sort of natural type of shape. No, it is thrip damage. Thrips really, really like the crowns of orchids and actually have footage of this orchid with a thrip. The thrip that created this damage. So if you ever see this happening on your orchid, I am 99.9% .9 sure it is a thrip that's causing it. I don't know of any other insect that causes those indentations. Spider mites, they act differently, mealybugs, they do different type of damage. There are different signs, but with thrips on Phalaenopsis, this is what happens. And when I had my big infestation of thrips on my mini fowls, this is how it looked like. Solution for me is, again, this guy. And what I do, and again, I do it more frequently now because I know this is what thrips like. I go at a distance and just spray a little bit the crown, one side, second side, 
put a very thin layer of oil on it and that's it. The thrips will not attack this crown for months now. It kind of lasts a few months on this side of the leaf and on this side it goes away pretty fast. The oil, I mean. Part of the oil is indeed absorbed by the plant, I'm pretty sure, but I haven't seen any adverse effects if I use a very small quantity, so that's what I do. And my fowls are for the main part pretty pest free. Just wanted to show you this damage right here. If you ever see it, it's thrips. Take action immediately. It's the worst type of pest I've ever dealt with, I have to say. If you let it unbothered, it's gonna take over everything. And it's not fun because they can also fly. Did I tell you they can fly? Oh boy, not fun. So that's about it for today. In the end, just wanted to show you my dearest orchid, to be honest, because my mom actually saw it in the store and she got it for me. Whenever this one blooms, I send her pictures. By the way, my mom is the Phalaenopsis Whisperer. She blooms those Phalaenopsis that I left with her like nothing. She is a Phalaenopsis Whisperer at this point. Anyway, so the orchid from her, oh my gosh, it's so thriving. We have one new bud here. I see another bud developing in this new growth and another bud Hopefully two, who knows? This one can produce two buds. Another bud here. I have a sheath here, which I don't think it's gonna bloom, but at least these three, they will bloom. I'm so happy. Um, so yeah, you can see ups and downs, absolutely normal, but it happens and it's important for me to put it on video just to let you guys know that, hey, we're, we're in the same boat. The difference is that I can justify the price of those plants. I do YouTube, at least part of my revenue here, if not most of it is reinvested in these rackets. So don't feel bad for me or don't feel so bad. I'm gonna repurchase them, I can, you know, I can justify purchasing them, but take it as be careful because most of you don't get your investment back from these plants, whether it's rackets or a different plant. Just be careful, be careful what type of advice you are following. Try to think it through. It's something, or rather if something is a little bit sketch, a little bit sus, maybe don't do it. Because plants are a live thing, which is fragile. You cannot control it. You cannot repair it all the time. And always remember, natural world, natural habitats, nothing, nothing like your living room. Rules don't apply in the same way. Just stay on the safe side because sometimes even with precautions, carp can happen. <laughs> Drang to censor my speech right now, but these, this is an instant where I would cuss a little bit. I would, I would. I'm not gonna do it on the video, don't worry, but it's, uh, I feel like I wanna, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, but don't worry about me. Don't worry about anything. Oh, I'll repurchase them. But anyway, let's end it here. Thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed today's update and if you didn't enjoy it hope you learned something from it hope you learned from my mistakes and with that said i will wish you a great day and no orchid losses subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos tutorials experiments updates and other fun orchid subjects if you wish to support the channel do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description you can also follow me on instagram and facebook it's always nice to stay in touch there as well and I'll see you all next time. Bye.